Hello again. I'm back with another clock to repair. This one is a Hammond Bichronist clock. It's the second one that I've worked on of this type. The first one I have over here. This, the first one that I did is from 1931, but I believe this one is much older, uh, somewhere in the 1920s, which makes it close to, if not already 100 years old. This one is the model B2. Uh, most of the Hammond clocks you see are what they call synchronous clocks, which means they run on AC power that is synchronized with the frequency coming from the power company, which is 60 hertz, uh, which also means it's cycling at 60 times per second. The bichronous clocks also use a similar motor to the synchronous ones, but it has an added device, which is a built-in key that winds a spring. And if power is lost, it'll let the clock run for 30 minutes. I imagine that in the 20s and 30s, brief power outages were common. With the first one of these that I worked on, I was able to get it to run, this one here. But although the internal key would spin, it didn't seem to wind up the spring and it wouldn't run uh, when the power was removed from it. And also when it did run, it was very noisy. I'll show some of the issues that I'm facing with this clock. One is that it's missing the glass. Another is that it is the original power cord, the cloth covered type. And I really don't know if it runs yet because the plug isn't attached to the wire. And with the fraying of this old power cord, I wouldn't even attach it and plug it in until I have it open and can confirm that it's actually properly wired. The condition of the case is not all that bad. A few scratches and scuffs on it. I think I can be able to clean it up and polish it up rather nicely. What I do like is on the back, the information plate. These are usually quite worn and faded. This particular one is in very good condition, almost looks brand new. But what I'm going to do next is I'll set this up on my work table and get started on figuring out how to take it apart. One thing about Hammond clocks is that they are not self-starting. There's a start knob on the back and when you turn it, it makes a second hand spin. That's how you get them going. And what I've noticed with this one is when I give the start knob a spin, the second hand's not moving at all. So I don't know why that is. Hopefully that's going to be an easy fix, but won't know until I have it apart. For now, those three screws have to undo, but first I have to remove these two knobs. One's the start knob and the other is the set knob um, for setting the time. Hopefully it won't be too difficult to remove these. Oh, that wasn't bad at all. And I'm sure that's the first time that's been removed since this was put together. Very good. Next, I have to undo the screws. Okay, the clock should come out now through the front of the case. Let's get this out of here. Uh, interesting. There we go. Okay, we'll put this aside. Okay. I'm going to take a closer look to see how this comes apart. And once I figure out how I'm going to approach it, we'll continue. What I want to do is first remove the rim. And to do that, there's a large spring clip all the way around the edge here. I have to pry that out and that'll get the rim off. 
then I'll look to remove the hands. Uh, one thing that kind of bothers me is I don't know why this whole mechanism is sort of floating around in here. It should be secure, I imagine. Another thing I can mention is that in an effort to remind myself of how these are put together, I went back and looked at the video I did of my first Bikerness clock and discovered that one error I made was that although initially it didn't seem as if this little key, which is actually called a governor, wasn't winding up the spring, by the time everything was uh, completed, it actually was functioning properly. And when I turned off the power, the clock did continue to run. But for now, the first thing I want to do is look to remove the spring clip. The way to do it is there's a small gap where the spring uh, come together or almost, and you just have to get underneath the edge of it and kind of try to pry it out. And wow, that just popped out effortlessly. Look at that. Let's see. All right, there's our rim. Next, I'm going to try to get the hands removed. And on these old Hammonds, these second hands are usually uh, a threaded connection. So let's see if I can just unscrew it. Okay. Underneath, I see a small nut here. So next, I'm going to work on trying to remove that. If it's particularly tight, I just might put a little bit of uh, WD-40 to, to help loosen it up. So let me check on that next. Try to give this a turn, see if it loosens. Okay, that's not really budging. And I think if I forced it, I could bend the hand. So let me put a little bit of the WD-40 on it to loosen it up. I spray some in a cap, just apply it around this little nut here. And I'll give it a good five or ten minutes to soak in before I try to loosen it up again. It's been a few minutes. Let's see if I can remove the minute hand. I think it's turning. There we go. Now, if this is the same as the previous one I worked on, this dial and this hour hand should just come right out. Like that. Okay, we'll put this aside. And I have to take a close look to figure out how I'm going to open this up. <clears throat> I have a few screws here. And these little nuts are holding those in. So I imagine removing them will probably get the whole mechanism out from this housing. So I'll take those out next and we'll see what happens. is one two And let's see if this just pops out of here. Okay. 
and it does. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to take a closer look at what's in here. I want to check on the connection for the wire. If it looks intact, this could be a good time to put the plug back on here and uh, see if it runs. So let me take a closer look and then we'll continue. I've reconnected the plug, but I think I figured out why when I turned the start knob, the second head wouldn't spin. And I will try to show you that. This is the start knob. And what you do is you have to pull it back. It engages this gear underneath it. And as you rotate it, you can see it's turning here. Give it a spin, the second hand would go. But this particular gear that it's uh, engaging is made out of Bakelite. So it's just a hard plastic. <clears throat> and the two things I'm seeing, one is some of these teeth have broken off. So as this rotates, it reaches a point where there aren't any teeth and then it just won't turn. So if that's the position the clock is in when you're going to start it, it won't start. Another thing I'm noticing is that when I pull back on this knob or stem, the gear is actually not moving as this turns. And I'll, hopefully you can see what I mean by that. Everything's turning now, but now it stops. Oh, you'll have to take my word for it. There's, there you go. <clears throat> so I have to somehow secure this to this stem a little bit better. Uh, I'm still going to proceed and try to continue working on it. The next step will be to plug it in and see if it actually works. I've plugged it in. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to turn on the power and then we'll give the start knob a spin, see what happens. And it's not running. Try again. It almost seems like it wants to go. And it's running a little bit there and then stops. Definitely running a bit. I think the bottom line is it needs to be disassembled. All these gears have to be thoroughly cleaned and lubricated and then put back together. So the next step will be working on taking it apart. And don't mind the barking dog. What I'm going to do is remove this plate first. There's three nuts here that hold it on. And once I get those removed and I'm ready to lift up the plate, then we'll continue. I've removed the three nuts, and as I start to lift up this plate, what I'm seeing is a lot of movement with the gears underneath. And it's going to be really easy for me to just knock these out of, out of position. So I have to lift this up very, very slowly. It'll take me some time. I have to kind of tease my way around it. But once this plate is off, then I'll continue. I was able to remove the plate. What's difficult with this clock is instead of the gears sitting individually, they all seem to be what I refer to as a sandwich gear. They're in pairs and they insert in between each other. This one here fit in between these two gears here. And to try to take them out, you can see the gaps and how they fit into each other. So you can't just seat them. You sort of have to put them together and position them all at the same time, which is kind of difficult. Anyway, I should be able to remove these. And there's that one. Okay. So my next step will be and you can see there's a lot of debris, dirt, gunk, I don't even know what this is. And this is the Bakelite gear I was referring to. And you can definitely see around the edges here where some of the teeth are broken off. Anyway, my plan is to thoroughly clean and lubricate these. And then I'll look to reassemble the top portion 
and then hopefully remove the other side and access those gears as well. So let me work on all of that and then we'll continue. I've cleaned up the gears, the plate, I've lubricated the uh, pivots and the bushings. You can see how much cleaner the bake light gears look. And I want to reassemble the top portion. It's uh, although it's easy to get these first couple in. That goes here. And this fits over here. The difficulty is in slipping this gear in between here and that'll take me some time. So once I have that assembled, then we'll continue. And at that point, I will likely plug it back in and see if it's running better. So let me work on that. I was able to get everything positioned properly and seat the plate, secure everything. And what I actually did was I took a look at the first video I made on my initial Bikerness clock and these mechanisms are uh, exactly the same and uh, the benefit of having done it once made it a bit easier to assemble this the second time around. Anyway, let me plug it back in and uh, let's see if it's going to run. I'll put the power on, give the start knob a spin. And it's running, which is good to see. Let me turn the power off for a moment. What I want to do next is I'm going to turn it back on and let it run for a while just to see if it powers up the spring. And that way I'll know if everything's functioning properly. So let's do that. And I'll just leave this for a bit, and then when I come back, we'll test to see if the spring mechanism is functioning properly. It's, it's been running now for a few hours, and what I'm going to do is shut the power and see if it starts to run just using the spring. Okay, power is off, and it looks like it's continuing to run. And a couple of interesting things with the gears in here that I want to show you, but I have to kind of zoom in a bit closer for you to see that, so let me get the camera for that. Let me move in a bit. Hopefully I can hold this steady. I'll put the power back on. And you can see the direction of these gears here. They're both going the same way. And when I turn the power off, which puts it into spring power, it reverses. So clearly now it's strictly the spring is what's making it go. This is the uh, spring here. You can see that moving. And the other thing I'm noticing, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it's quite quiet with just the spring. But when I give it power, there's a bit of noise to it. In any event, my plan next is I'm going to open up the back plate, get these gears out, give everything a good cleaning and lubricating, put it back together, and uh, see what that does for it. So I'll work on that and then we'll continue. I have to undo the three nuts on this side of the plate. There's one. Okay, let's see how easily I can tease this one off. Okay, similar to the other side, a lot of these gears are starting to kind of get a little bit displaced. So I'm going to just very slowly tease this off. And once it's removed, then I'll continue. And that was the spring that just released. All right, let me take a closer look. I managed to remove the plate, several gears on this side. 
and what I want to do next is take a few photos of this so I see the positioning of the gears before I start to remove them uh, individually. So let me work on that and then we'll continue. I'll try to show how these come out. One here. This is the spring. And then on the upper plate here, there's actually a little spring right here. Have to be careful not to lose that. And then this stem and gear come out and I see a little washer. Can't lose that either. And this one looks like it comes out too, no because these seem to be riveted in place. Anyway, the next step for me is to clean up everything, get everything lubricated, and then I'll look to reassemble it. So let me work on that, and then we'll continue. Everything has been cleaned and lubricated. I used a very fine synthetic clock oil, along with what's known as oil pins. It allows you to apply a tiny little bit of oil to the various uh, pivots, as well as the bushings and the plates. And the next step is going to be to reassemble the gears. Let me just move in a little. Those two go there. This one is here. This fits here. And I just have to put the spring and the washer back on that. Then I'll be ready to just invert the plate and secure it over these set of gears. And that'll take quite a bit of time to work on. So let me do that. Once everything is back together, then we'll continue. I was able to get everything back together. I got the plate secured. It's plugged in. Let me turn it on. Give it a start. And it's running. I definitely can still hear it a bit, but my plan is I'll let it run for about an hour. I want to check to see if the spring winds itself up. And uh, once I know that that's working, then I'll just continue with reassembling everything. It's been running now for about an hour, and I'm gonna turn off the power, see if it runs with just the spring. Try to zoom in so you can see the gears hopefully stop and reverse when I turn off the power. Okay, power's off and um, <clears throat> it's still going. So at this point, my plan is to clean up the parts before reassembling it, I want to polish up the rim, clean the dial and the hands, and then I'm going to have to go to work on cleaning and polishing up the wood case. So let me get started on all of that, and then we'll continue. I've cleaned the dial, as well as the hour hand, a few scratches on it from it going around, nothing I can do about that. Did the same thing, cleaned and polished both the second hand, as well as the breast rim which came out nice. I went to clean the minute hand and ended up flaking off all of the black paint that was on it. So I had to repaint this. And before reassembling it, one other thing I need to do is I have to replace the power cord on here. This is an original one. It's badly frayed in a lot of areas. And fortunately, I have an original type cloth covered power cord which is in really good condition. And what I plan to do is, ideally, I would remove this one by undoing the solder points, but the way it's snaked in underneath the coil and through here, I don't want to disturb it. So I'm going to cut it here. I'll solder together, or yeah, I'll solder it together and then use some uh, heat shrink tubing to close it up and all of this will be inside the clock case. 
So I'll get to work on the power cord first, most likely. And once I am ready to take it apart, I will continue. I've cut off the power cord and stripped the ends on the uh, clock and did the same with the replacement cord. And then I slid a small shrink wrap tubing here and a larger one over both of the wires. And my plan is, got the spring work in here, I'll solder one end to here and then slide the smaller tube over the wires and shrink it, solder the other one, and then slide the larger tube over the whole, both of them. And it should be a nice clean look to it um, as it's exiting the back of the clock. So let me start by soldering these together. That'll take some time. I'm going to work on that and then I'll continue. I soldered the wire to the uh, first one and now I'm going to slide the shrink wrap tubing over it. Okay, next I'm going to shrink that with my uh, hot air gun. That'll take a few minutes, so I'll work on that, and then I'll look to solder together the next one. The hot air gun is a bit noisy. I'll start it just to show you how it works, but then I'll finish it up on my own. just have to do that for a minute or so and once that's done I'll work on soldering the next wire. I shrunk down the tubing and what I'm going to do next is slide the other one up over the two wires and then I'll shrink that down. So let me work on that. I soldered the second wire, slid the tubing up over the cord and shrunk it down. That's nice and tight. What I want to do next is attach the plug on the end of the cord, plug it in, make sure that it's still working before I proceed. I've attached the plug. Let's plug it in and turn it on. And I see gears turning, so I know it's working. So we're good to continue. Now, before I reassemble everything in here, what I want to focus on next is working on the case. Going to look to clean off all the dirt, restore some of the blemishes with some uh, of my restore finish stain, and then look to polish it up. So that will take quite some time. I'll work on that. And once that's finished, I'll continue. I've completed my work on the case using a wood cleaner. I removed a lot of dirt that was on it. And then using the Restorer finish, I touched up the scuff marks and the scratches and ended up polishing it with a couple of coats of polyurethane. And I think it has a nice shine to it. I'm very happy how it came out. And now I can proceed with reassembling the clock. The first thing is I have to slip the mechanism back into the housing. Then this plate goes back on top and I have to secure this with the three little screws and nuts that go around here. So let me work on that and then I'll continue. The plate is on. The one thing I haven't figured out yet is why there's still a bit of play of this mechanism inside the housing. I imagine it really should be a snug fit but I'll just continue and we'll see what happens. The next step is going to be to reseat the dial. As you can see, I removed the mechanism from the housing again. It was just bothering me that it was loose in here. It really should be tight. And on other clocks that I've worked on, I've seen rubber washers or grommets that are used to hold mechanisms snug up against the housings. 
Uh, they tend to dry out and deteriorate. And I wasn't seeing any evidence of those in here, but when I looked really close, and I'll try to show you, I did pick up little specks of black in here, which I believe is just dried up what's left of the rubber washers or grommets that were in here. So I'm gonna to try to come up with something suitable that might fit in here. And I think if I get the spacing just right, it'll tighten everything up. So I'll get to look to see what I have. And once I come up with something, I will continue. I think I came up with a solution. I couldn't find any rubber grommets or washers, but I came up with some lock washers, very small ones, that fit perfectly in the little openings here. So I placed three of them in there. Now I'm going to reseat the housing, uh, the mechanism into the housing. And what I'm going to do next is secure this plate back over the uh, front of it. Once I have this all tightened up, we'll check to see if it uh, if it works. The plate is back on, and very happy to see that now there is no play whatsoever with the mechanism inside the housing. So next, I'm going to reseat the dial reattach the hands and uh, proceed from there. I've seated the dial. Now for the hands. First I have to put the hour hand on the 12 and then the minute hand and then have to secure it with this little nut. Okay, now for the minute hand. Next, the glass and the rim. And I'm going to flip this over, but I want to cushion the glass a bit with a, a bit of a towel here. And what I have to do now, <coughs> secure it with this spring. I don't know how easy this will be. In fact, uh, it's not. So let me work on that, and then once I have this secured, I'll continue. I was able to get the spring around the uh, rim. Everything is on. And the next step will be to place this back into the case. Now I have to secure it with the back plates. First this one. And then this one. Okay, next I have to line up and place the screws back in here to hold everything snug. Let me work on that and then I'll continue. The screws are in. I seated the start knobs. The clock mechanism is snug in the case now. There's no movement. And my plan is to plug it in, 
let it run for a couple of hours and see if the spring winds up. That way I can test to see if it's running properly both with and without power. So in a couple of hours, I'll have it set up and we'll see how it looks and runs. It's been running now for a couple of hours. I have it plugged in. Let me turn off the power. And it looks like it's still running, which is good to see. So there you have it. A Hammond, uh, looks like it's slowed down there. I guess the spring isn't fully wound. But it's a Hammond Bikerness clock from, I believe, the late 1920s. I hope you enjoyed the video. And that pretty much wraps things up. Bye for now.